Hello and welcome to another YouTube video here at Pragmatic Works. My name is Mitchell Pearson, and today we're going to be taking a look at Copilot. Now, Copilot is inside of Microsoft Office products, it's inside of the web experience, it's inside of Power BI Desktop, it's everywhere. All right, I'm talking to friends, they're building their PowerPoints now with Copilot. I want to focus specifically from a data engineering perspective on how to use Copilot to accelerate our development effort. And so we're going to be taking a look at Copilot within Microsoft Fabric. If you want to join or you want to follow along, you're not going to be able to follow along with my exact demo today. But in order to work with Copilot, you do need to have a fabric capacity, a paid fabric capacity that you've provisioned that you've turned on and that you have assigned to the workspace that you're going to be working in. So here's my workspace. And in this workspace, the first thing I want to do is create a data flow. Now I'm starting with data flow and there's a good chance this is going to become a series because Copilot is so important. In fact, just to take it a step further, here at Pragmatic Works, one of the things that we do is we do on-demand learning. And we have over 240 classes currently available on our on-demand learning platform. So if you're interested on staying up to date with Copilot, AI, data engineering, power apps, any of that stuff, make sure to go to pragmaticworks.com, use my code Mitchell40 to get a 40% discount. And that way you can keep up to date with all the latest and greatest technology. So what I'm going to do here in this first video is I'm going to create a data flow. And the way I do that is I click new item. So I'm just right here in my Microsoft Fabric workspace. And I'm going to choose from the list right here, Data Flow Gen 2. I'm going to give mine a name. I'll just call it something intuitive. So Data Flow, and then I'm going to go with YouTube. All right, so I know what it is, and I'll click Create. Now, maybe you're familiar with Data Flow Gen 2, and maybe you're not. But the technology that we're using right here for Data Flow Gen 2 is the same technology that you use for Power Query in Power BI Desktop. And so that's why I'm starting with this technology here, because most people are going to already become familiar with it. You're already familiar with how to use it. And so this is not something that's going to be very difficult for us to do. Now, I could ask Copilot right out the gate here, which normally it's not on, I don't think. Normally, I would have to turn it on if you've never done it before. But right here, I can click to get new data source. And you'll notice that we have the same data source options that you would have pretty much if you were working from Power BI Desktop locally. And so what I'm going to do is go to More. And if I want to get new sources, I can click view more right here and it'll show me a list of all the data sources I can connect to, which is a lot. There's a lot of data sources that are available that we can connect to from our data flow. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to choose a lake house that I already have loaded in Microsoft Fabric to keep this demo simple. And I'm gonna click on my lake house that has some Fabricam data that is used for really some of the Microsoft classes. And so I have this data that is sitting out there and I need to clean it up. I need to combine the data so I can move it into my silver layer or maybe into my kind of gold layer, if you will. And the two tables that I wanna combine or clean up is going to be my invoices and my invoice line items. That's what I wanna do. So I'm gonna grab those two tables and then I'm gonna go ahead and create my data flow. This is going to open this up. Again, if you're familiar with Power Query, if you've never seen this view before, you're immediately gonna say, wait a minute, this looks familiar, and yes, it does. Now, Power Query itself is a UI-driven tool, a graphical user interface, very easy and intuitive to work with. And so using Copilot here, you know, is going to save you time for sure, especially if you've never worked with this technology, but not as much as it can save you in other technologies like notebooks, which we'll talk about in a later video. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit the Copilot button. And now that opens up my Copilot prompt. And what I want to do here is I want to create a new query or a new table that combines invoices and invoice line items so that I have one table that has all my invoice information, right? We're kind of moving to that silver layer. We're moving to the gold layer. We want to combine that data. So let's see what Copilot does. Combine the invoice line items and invoices table into a single table. So we'll put our request in. We'll hit enter. And then I didn't give it any information. I didn't tell Copilot what to join the tables on, what was the key. Um, I didn't tell it to do a left outer join or a right outer join or an inner join. I just said, go join these tables together. And so now it says that it's done. We see that it's created a new query right here, which we can name. And if I go down and look at the code, I can see that it's joining on invoice ID, which is correct from the invoices table, invoice ID from the line items table, 
and it's doing a left outer join, which is a safe join. So that's probably the right choice here. I like it. I love it. Now I can come all the way over to the right and see that here is all of the columns from my line items table. So this is a step I'm going to do manually because I am going to leave a few columns out. And so I'm going to hit the expand button here. Make sure that I have use original column name as prefix unchecked. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab invoice line ID, stock item ID. I'm not too worried about the description here. I'm going to grab quantity and unit price. I am going to, uh, I'll bring in tax rate, tax rate and tax amount. Why not? And then I'll go ahead and click on OK. All right. So I'll click OK. And now we've created a table. We used Copilot to do the heavy lifting with no information at all. It created the proper join and we now have a new table. Now, the next thing that I can do with this query that we've created is we can start to kind of clean up the data. So the first thing I want that we don't have is I want to know what is my line total? We don't have a line total. We have the quantity of product and then we have the unit price of that product, but we don't have a line total. So once we get this into our semantic model, once we get this into a Power BI desktop model, we don't have a single column that we can quickly sum for our calculated measure. And so I'm going to ask Copilot again, create a new column for line total that combines, I'm not going to tell it it's multiplication. I'm just going to say that combines unit price and quantity. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let it go through, think about it a little bit, figure out what kind of aggregation needs to occur. You'll see right here, it says it's doing a multiply. That part looks awesome. And so we have this new column here called line total. It is taking the unit price of each row and multiplying it times the quantity of each row. And so if I take 18 times 48, that's going to probably give me something in the range of 864. So this looks good. I like where we're at right now. Copilot is doing a great job. I don't like that it is in any data type. Now, again, we know probably how to fix this real quick, but Copilot can do it for me. So for example, I could say, change the data type of line total to decimal. I can tell it right there what I want it to do, and I can let it go through and update the line total from that any data type to a decimal data type. There we go. So this is so far so good. You can go down and you'll see there are some decimals a little bit further down here. All right, so we've taken and combined two tables together, expanded to get the columns that we wanted. We multiplied, and then we did a change data type. Another thing that I want to do here is I have three columns that have a date, time, data type. And most of the time, I'm either going to take the time, if I really need the time, and I'm going to split it out into a second column, or I'm going to get rid of the time and I'm going to change my data, data type of date time into a data type of date. So what I can do is instead of trying to go through and find all the columns that might have that data type and do it individually one by one, and I think there's three, I think there's an invoice date, there's a last contacted date, and then there's a third date in here. And so what I'm going to do, there's a confirmed delivery date, a last edited win. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Copilot, replace all data types of date time with date. Replace all data types of date time with the data type of date. We'll hit enter. We'll let that run. The great thing is we have the formula bar at the top. So once it's done, we can always modify it. We can always verify that the code is doing exactly what we would expect it to do. So it's loading, but while it's loading, we can see what it's doing. So normally it actually provides a list of the columns that have a date time, but it's actually looking for, let's see. Oh man, it's a bunch. You see right here, it's looking for date time, then change it to a date. So let's see what we got. So we know we had at least two that we found a minute ago. We had invoice date. That's been updated to a date. If we go a little bit further here, we have, oh, it did not work on this one. It did not work. So that is interesting. It kind of let me down on that one. This is the funny thing about Copilot and AI, right? Specifically AI is that it is non-deterministic. It doesn't always give you the same results. Now I will say, from a data flow perspective, this is one of the only times it has not given me exactly what I wanted it to do. So we can always try to query it again. We can always try to prompt it again by going in here and maybe wording it a little bit different. But yeah, it's uh, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. So I'm going to leave that in. I'm not going to edit that out of the video. And here's why, because it is non-deterministic and that's why it's important to always validate our work. So if I wanted to, I could go through and I could update those manually. But like I said, when I first saw the code, I was like, oh, that's different than the way I've seen it. Generate the code, 
for similar demos that I've done in the past. Now I do wanna try one more thing here. So if I go all the way over to the right, you'll notice that we have a line total. And I wanna create a column that tells me whether it's a small, medium, or large order, right? So order size. So I wanna create a new column for order size. And that's all I'm gonna tell Copilot. And we're gonna see how much Copilot can figure out on its own without me prompting it or giving it any additional information. So create a new column for the order size. And I'm just gonna do that. Now, it's hard for me just to give it that much information because I wanna give it a better prompt. I really do. I wanna give it more information. I wanna say small, medium, and large. I wanna say, you know, um, and see, categorically, it actually did not do what I wanted it to do. A lot of that is because I didn't give it a great prompt. And so I can try to give it a better prompt, right? I can tell it, create a new column for small, medium, and large orders and give it a name of order size. So let's, let's get rid of that step. Let's give it a better prompt because prompting, obviously, is going to be very important as we experience it. And so create a new column for small, medium, and large orders. Now, I'm not telling it the name of the column. I'm not telling it the data type. There's a lot of information, again, that I'm leaving out, but I wanna see what it does, all right? And so this time, with a slightly better prompt, not significantly better, but slightly better, I actually have a column that does say it's the order size. Within this column, we have small, medium, and large orders being identified. Now, if you look in the formula bar, any order with a quantity less than 50 is considered small. Any order with a quantity less than 100 is considered medium. And everything else is considered large. Now, I might say, you know what? This is a really good start, but I want to consider anything under 30 is small. Well, I can go in here and I can just change the code. And now it's going to work for that. Or I can leave it with the original assumption. Or I could even tell Copilot to dive deeper into the data based on you know, 50% of the orders are going to be small. So look at what that threshold is or what is the median of all quantities and determine that anything that falls below the medium is, median is going to be small, right? Like you could give it a much better prompt to get better data, but this is awesome. This is amazing. So we combine two tables together. We have some data cleansing operations that's happened. I can also just quickly to show you, I can just quickly get rid of a column. Now, again, if you're familiar with Power Query, you know you can right-click remove columns. But if you were inside of a notebook, you might not know to do a dot drop command to get rid of that from a data frame. So Copilot can help you out a lot faster. So I could say, oh, I want to get rid of that column. So remove the column returned delivery data. And I'm going to put some spaces in there. I'm not going to type it exactly perfect, case sensitive, see what Copilot does. But I expect Copilot to get rid of that column. And you'll notice that if we come up to the top, it did a table.remove columns function and it has gotten rid of that column. So in this video, and of course the next step, if you're completely new to data flows, is I can go to data destination here at the bottom. I can point to a destination. I can give that table a name and I can load it into a destination table. But what I wanted to show you in this video is how to leverage Copilot. Now, if this is new to you, not just Copilot, but maybe Fabric and you're like, hey, I was intimidated by Fabric, but as I watch more videos, I'm realizing Fabric actually isn't that hard. It's just a different way to do what I've been doing in Power BI. But I'd like some help. We at Pragmatic Works can help you with that as far as just jumping on a call and working with you, helping you with that migration. Or we can do full-blown consulting projects where we help you migrate to Fabric as well as help you take advantage of the AI capabilities and the co-pilot capabilities that are continuing to evolve and be added into the Microsoft Fabric product. So if that interests you, once again, go to pragmaticworks.com, take a look at the different consulting services that we have. And if you're still a little bit unsure of what we can do, schedule a meeting with us. Just go right on there and say, I want to schedule a meeting you, and you can jump right on the call. And if it's fabric related, I'll probably be on that call and we can talk to you about the different services that we do. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And listen, if you want to see more videos like this one, let us know in the comments below so that we know that this is something you're interested in. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.